gamers don't only exist on Twitter. I think if you're trying to expand and go beyond the current present audience, which is tiny, you need to be everywhere that they're looking. So the first thing we actually did, and we don't talk about it enough, but um, I think everyone should be kind of thinking about is SEO. So we spent pretty much majority of the first year and a half, two years working on kind of building our domain authority so that when someone Googles like Shrapnel or Illuvian or Star Atlas or whatever, like they find us and then that kind of leads them into signing up to the platform and finding other games. So um, yeah, I mean, just think about it as a gamer, like you typically find out about new games either because a friend tells you about it or you watch a TikTok video somewhere or you check out a reel or you see something on YouTube. Like you're, I didn't find out about Black Myth Wukong from Twitter. So there's no reason for me to continue only broadcasting on Twitter. So that's kind of been the approach. Obviously we had to build a foundational base on Twitter or X, what you're getting is inevitable. Um, but we expanded really quickly outside of it. I mean, Twitch was one of the, the first ones that we jumped into, but we grew that quite a bit. YouTube's the same. And Instagram and TikTok are a bit more um, recent because I do think there's a lot more pushback from that type of audience. We just, I was talking to the Moonfrost guys um, earlier this week. We put out a video about Moonfrost that was just like, hey, if you like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, you might like this game. Purely like had nothing to do with assets, no NFTs, no money, nothing. It wasn't like, it wasn't saying you'll make money playing this game, but the comment section was still like, oh, I Googled it and it has NFTs, ew, blah, blah, blah. But the video still got 40,000 views organically. So the appeal to the types of games and the quality of games that we have today in our space is definitely there. It's just that like educational hurdle in terms of like, oh, they're all scams. And I read somewhere about this monkey picture that costs a million. All of these might be ridiculously priced, blah, blah, blah. So what the game is gonna have um, But yeah, man, that's, that's the idea. Like we need to be everywhere. So we're, we're trying to be everywhere. The game is going to go. <laughs> the game is going to um, Yeah, I think we had like slightly over 30 in the first kind of iteration of it. Um, we closed applications, but we are reopening them. The plan is to reopen them in September. So there's going to be an announcement somewhere about that soon. Um, yeah, honestly, I mean, I don't know, you probably know more than most because we've kind of talked about this quite a bit together, but um, our focus wasn't really on like getting the biggest creators in the space to join the program as much as it was about actually growing kind of the smaller creators. So we realized that a lot of community members in our Discord and, you know, in other kind of communities around in the space, um, they like making content, they just don't know what works or maybe they lose sight of you know, how to continue being consistent or whatever. So um, the program was actually a bit more catered towards them more than anything. So we, we didn't, you know, I mean, we could just talk to Bryson's and everyone with 100K followers and get them on board and get them to talk about us. And that would be great, like impression wise, but it doesn't really, what the game is gonna go. It doesn't really get us where we wanna go. I think the goal of our program is to actually build up new content creators so that they go on to then continue creating content about the space because that would be net positive for us as a platform and as a company. Um, and that's what we've done, right? So the first month and I guess three weeks now, almost four technically, um, we've focused on educating a lot. So like we have this Creator Academy program where people can jump in and like watch George explain how to use OBS, how to stream, how to do this, how to do that, how to get better at you know making content, captions, etc. cetera. Um, primarily because we just wanna elevate the quality of the content and then, you know, the money stuff is just like perks on the side, in my opinion. You could always walk away and go to like another creative program and they might pay you more, they might pay you less. But if you're solely in this program for the money, like that's not really 
the appeal behind it. What we are trying to do is actually open doors for a lot of these creators. Like, if you want to learn how to get better at content, here you go. If you want to, you know, maybe get an intro to a game because you're really passionate about it, but you know, you're you're stuck in their DMs or something, like we'll make the intro. Um, if you want to fly out to an event or something and it's really important to you, like we'll make that a prize, for example. So that's kind of been the focus of the program. That's a good idea. And then you should mint them on the blockchain. <laughs> yes, sir. What if the game is in Nice. Oh, I think I saw that, yeah. We'll, we'll pretend that that was the one before we started. Games in I want to ask you a question actually. So, who is the charity donation going to and why?
Ott igen, de nem róla. Oh man, um, yeah, there's there's a lot, and uh, without getting political as well, um, most of them are, you know, kid centric. Because I think I agree with you. Um, the best thing that we could probably do is provide for the future generation in some way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, I mean, orphans, refugees, like that type of stuff. 